Not direct, not directly. I've okay. set indirectly instead of seeing someone use it. Did you find a use for it in some of the stuff that you do? Yeah, no. It's, I, mean, I, I, I was kind of. We were talking about how, like, um, I've got the term, but you know how you make like little figurines for yourself. Like, that's yeah. kind of really popular. Um, but from there, like, I was, I was talking to someone. They were saying how it's being used in um, the like uh, funeral kind yeah. of sector yeah. where people are doing like. Replica bus of people who died and things like that mm. uh, from a photo, so like taking a photo, and then that mm. basically with a generic face shape, yeah. you can create like fake versions of people who've died. Basically. Well, <laughs> and it's a huge, it's huge in the US, right? They make loads of money from this. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so that's taken from two images of my own course, and mm. using it as an CAD software, I did two extrusions and then a bit of moulding afterwards. But this is where the technology is really great at the moment. It's for making bespoke one-off product. And that's that's essentially its use in engineering, which has been there for 20 or 30 years. And that's where it's really, really, you know, could be really, really useful. Um, I was just did a talk um, with looking at in the defence industry and they were saying that if they had printers on board or actual factories on board, then they wouldn't need serious amounts of, of spare components, in fact they could just print components on demand and if there was wearing of, say, or, or burring of a certain component, they could just print it to match the hole in which it needed to fit. It's interesting to hear that, that application, oh. given that in, in photography, at one point, photographing dead people was a thing. You know, you would photograph your recently deceased relatives. It doesn't seem to be that sort of thing anymore. Mm. But it, it just kind of puts puts this in a, a context of where where it is as a kind of very early consumer <coughs> technology. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you follow, if you follow like the garden the hype curve, right? Three D printing was always kind of in that early stage where it's basically. Everyone's talking about it, it's really cool, and then it will fade in the next year or two years, mm -hmm. and then it will, it will come back again pract with practical applications of it, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's almost like there are so many weird applications and fun applications of it. Mm -hmm. And everyone's thinking, oh, that's amazing, it could do parts for cars, and it's just, but no, I, I don't know anyone that does do that, because mm -hmm. as a consumer, you're not necessarily connected with those sorts of organizations. Well, I was just telling Lloyd on the train over, you know, we, we received. And, and I said also that we approached it with a healthy dose of scepticism. We have received our printer and within a month we made this line of jewellery, but we now find it a vital tool to our business. It creates most of our prototypes for our clients. And it doesn't, what, what I would try and emphasise is that it doesn't take away from the traditional design and engineering practice that we do, but it gives us an added capability. So we still want to go to the drawing board. We still want to mock up with, with paper, card, whatever you've got. We, we only then, later, use it to make a, a working prototype that they can take to a manufacturer. And it also gives us a good understanding as to what, what is capable to be manufactured and what isn't. So, I know someone who had this car stand for Corby. Because um, they, they use, um, <laughs> rather than trying to model it on the computer, it's so much easier to, to scan a real car. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a replica of the car, but it's in scan of um, the Well, and, 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 I mean, scanning is very much still like yeah. like this part of 3D printing. Um, it's, some builds turn, or some scans turn out incredible. And pick like pitch perfect, but others, you know, get artifacts. So um, we we actually did a um, what's the stone called in um, America? Um, Mount Rushmore. We did a Mount Rushmore of the four of our heads, and my two co-founders had facial hair, and it depicted their faces a lot better than mine and, and Boris's. You um, should have grown a beard. <laughs> I should have grown a beard, but you know, this started merging into my face, and I had a big. Um, bulbous on my other, on the other part of my face, and yeah, they even stuck holes in my eyes to show that I actually had eyes. Um, but you know, it's 
it's very hit and miss and, and we are on the wave of something really great but I think it's it's more about the what when I'm trying to put over us, it's more about this kind of decentralization of stuff. Because this is a this kind of format could be applied to all modes of manufacture. It doesn't have to be 3D printing. This could be laser printing, this could be um, injection molding, this could be CNC milling. It it's a kind of it's a way where we're we, we now have the internet, we now use the internet for, to connect us with people. Why is it not connecting us, connecting us with product? Mm. But, you know, the sustainability of, of this kind of thing is, yeah. is kind of, I think, kind of groundbreaking. Isn't it? There's, there's a local uh, manufacturer who I know uh, here in the Medway Towns, and they've got three factories, and they, they make, um, um, what do you call it? PCBs? Yeah, printed circuit boards. Yeah, yeah print, yes. printed circuit boards. Um, and, and what they do is, it's a bit like a crowdsourcing thing, is if somebody wants a PCB, they can actually... Um, uh, it's, it's... How do I describe it? Um, they can, you can do small runs, as small as you want, which encourages people prototyping or just hobbyists, etc. Um, and they have it to where the person actually does it, sends their design on the sort of pre-made software on the web and then they print it off and send it off in a small package, yeah. package runs. Um, so you, you're right, yeah, there is a bit of a, a future about connecting um, and uh, encouraging. Well, you're um, also connecting yourself with those experts that we talked about, those skilled, yeah. those skilled um, Technicians and those skilled engineers and designers. It's, it, I mean, we all want to be able to do everything, but it's not feasible for us to be able to man our 3D printer and do this and do that. I mean, it's, it's nice that you use that wealth of knowledge that's already there and, and be able to interact with it when you want. I mean, the reason why they created, what well, I know the fundamental reasons why they created this company, and it's because they didn't like the fact that the, the um, 3D printers weren't being used to their full capacity and there's a lot of idle 3D printers sitting around the world mm. and how can we actually get these 3D printers doing stuff because there's people out there who want to be using them but they don't necessarily, can't necessarily know how to use them. Do you think it, though it's a, a question, because the thing I asked when I saw 3D printing working was like uh, there are lots of, I reckon there are lots of like creative enterprises who can who have a use for 3D printing, either as prototyping or as, as a final product in itself. But there's almost like this barrier in the middle, which is I don't have a clue how to use CAD software yeah. or what I need to do. And it, there's a certain skill you need. So how do you get access to the middleman before you get access to the printer? Well, I think it's, it's a case of knowledge as well. I mean, they are starting to make a lot of. I mean, they're taking it to schools. There's a lot of CAD software there that's just putting blocks and circles and things together to make shapes, which it can do basically most things that you need. Say you need a coat hook, most <coughs> of the stuff. It's when you start to look at the detail, and that's when you definitely need to be coming to a, a specific design engineer to apply that or get that sort of um, file. But yeah, as you say, the, there is a, a, a kind of a missing link there, isn't there? I mean, this this company is picking up, they've, so they've partnered with Autodesk, um, and they're also, Fairfield was a great partnership for them because it actually was some, you can just purchase that product off the internet mm -hmm. and it still comes through to the hub, so that file is already there. Mm -hmm. It's about generation of file, I think you're more talking about. When I, I use a CNC product, and they simplified that whole CAD because CAD is a, is a nightmare if you don't know how to use it. And the, the, the software that came with it, which is free software, is so easy to use. You literally just put your product in, your, your drawing in, and it will tell you, it will calculate all the parts and all that you, that you need, and then you produce the product. Yeah, well, like I said, the partnership here with Autodesk that was looking at was a thing called 3D. Catch, which is the one where you can take photos and create the uh, object, or there's, um, oh, there's 
3D animal or something like that where you can create, or 3D creature where you can create creatures. Mm -hmm. And then there's other ones as well that do different functions. And they are directly linked into this system. And actually what they've been having focusing on here is actually making those builds better for manufacture because there's a lot of undercutting and things where a bit to make the right shape and it's also about orientation of the build. I mean I, I showed quickly in City Born there's I made a, a phone case myself but um, as you saw on the video the phone case that we were printing was printing that, that way. So actually you're decreasing the um, the the kind of possible failure because the impact is not going to necessarily be in that direction. Whereas I printed mine flat and so my layers were like this. So every time I dropped it, it took away a layer or cracked it in the orientation. So it's, it's those kind of details as well that you need to think about when you're using the process like this. I think the other, the other thing that came up this afternoon that came to me as we were just talking there again is about, <clears throat> I don't know, I seem to be putting everything in historical context today, that's my job, um, is, is seeing it as, <clears throat> well I said this this afternoon and now I realise that the, 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 uh, most of the people in the room weren't aware of personal computers when they first came out. Mm -hmm. Charlotte was even born. Um, but um, um, but it very it feels to me very much like that time when you know you if you bought a computer you could either buy it as a kit to put together or you could buy it put together um, and very quickly things evolved and changed and and services arose around it and we all learned how to now we you you can clearly talk about well you just get this piece of software and it and does it. Whereas 14, 45 years ago, we, we weren't in that position. Yeah. We, we didn't, people didn't talk about software. And I think that's what, you know, again, that's, this is where we are. And, and it's opening up very quickly.